meeting for what is it, 13th, June 13th, 2023, to order. So the agenda pops up. Okay, um, next business meeting is Tuesday, June 27, 2023, at noon here at 11 North Front Street, second floor, room 204. Next month's hearing is Tuesday, July 11th, 2023, at 4 p.m. here in the same room. Staff, if you could raise your right hand and state your name for the record. And you promise to tell the truth in your testimony to the best of your ability this afternoon and evening. Yes, I do. Great. Uh, let's do the introduction. We'll start with you, David. David Cook. Carla Trot. Paige Koplansky. Jason Sudi. Oh, threw me off. I know. <laughs> Wait, I do have a commissioner. All right. Congratulations. <laughs> Uh, okay, and uh, we are to public forum. Do we have any public forums? Today? Um, we do not have public forum today, but we did discuss moving the second reading bylaw update um, under public forum for Kimberly, Kimberly to lead early this evening. Let's do it. Do you need to be swimming today? You know, I probably would have heard. All right, let's do it. So you, uh, Raise your right hand, state your name for the record. Kimberly Bernard Sheehy, Deputy Historic Preservation Officer. And you promise to tell the truth in your testimony this afternoon. I do. Excellent. All right, I'll read. So I'm going to uh, skip most of the preamble, but for the commissioners that were not here, uh, we are doing an update of all of the bylaws for all of the commissions, and we are starting with the part that is pertinent forum. So I was here last month, and this month I'm going to read it again, and then I'm going to have you vote on it. So, the Italian Village Commission's current bylaws regarding quorum are four members shall constitute a quorum, affirmative action on any issue requires a simple majority of those present, ability of the commission to operate determined by quorum may be modified with cause as defined by the chairman. The proposed update language is consistent with Columbus City Code section 3119.07. The commission shall take official action only by a majority of the members voting on the question on the table during a public meeting at which there is a quorum. A quorum exists when a majority of the members appointed to and serving on the commission are present at the meeting. When a quorum is lacking, no business can be acted on other than to adjourn the meeting. Okay. Would you like Let's... Later <laughs> yes. That's uh... <laughs> So we take a vote, we say no to it, then we all go over right now because they're <laughs> right, right, it's all over. Yeah. Um, are there are there questions? David, do you have any questions? No, no, I understand. No questions. No. Nor do I. Appreciate you uh, explaining everything to us last time. So with that, do you need a vote of approval or recommendation? I believe a vote of approval. Okay, so do I have uh, a uh, motion for approval? I would make that motion. And a second. I second. Great. All in favor? Uh, opposed? Abstentions? All right. Thanks a lot. Thanks for coming in. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Yep. Okay. Thank What's you. up next? Hold on. I got to My thing is being a real, real grouchy. Oh, no. A whole like brown, even browns or switch account situation. Okay. Here we go. Now I'm back. Really good. Okay. Good to hear, Commissioner Sidney. Just also, just to let all commissioners know, um, Commissioner Cook needs to leave by six this evening. So with the quorum conversation, we will do quorum at that time. So yep. we'll just try to get through these applications as best we can. Sounds good. Okay. Um, let's do approval of minutes from last meeting, May 9th, 2023. Do I have a motion? So good. Do I have a second? Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? And abstentions? Okay. Motion carries. The minutes are approved. Uh, moving to staff recommended applications. Um, let's see. That's... So before we get to staff recommended applications, Mr. Sudi, can we do approval, staff approval? Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Okay. Staff approvals. I skipped it. Skipped the whole thing. No worries. Uh, let's get a motion and then we'll, we'll jump ahead and go through them for abstentions. Can I have a motion on staff approvals? No, I will do that. <laughs> can I have a second? Second. Okay, all in favor? I'm opposed. And I will go through for abstentions and they start all the way back here. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah I got it. Um, I think they start on page seven. Yes. So let's do 716 North High Street, uh, 57 East First, 659 Kerr, 53 East Prescott, 24 East Third, 
17 brickle. Any abstentions on any of those? Okay, hearing none. Forward. All right, now let's go to staff recommended applications. It looks like the first one's moved to staff approval. So that puts us at number two, correct? Yes, that is correct. Okay, we're going to move on to IB 23 uh, 06 007 2nd Avenue. Sir? I can't settle. Will you raise your right hand and state the name for the record? Steve Hurd with the Urban Order Architecture. Let's tell the truth and the best you're willing to hear. Testimony is after. I do. Excellent. Yeah. Great. Proposed work description, revision to previously conceptual review, 5B230103. Enlarge the overhead garage door from 16 feet to 18 feet, installing new thermocord model, 5740 micro groove panel overhead door, Black Forest on the 1984 garage. Install a 24 inch by 30 inch Windsor pinnacle casement window on the north gable to match existing house addition. Install two new gooseneck light fixtures over the new garage door. Paint garage body color Benjamin Moore wrought iron and trim Sherman Williams tricorn black. Existing conditions. At the June business meeting, the commissioners were in support with the marking of the 1984 garage door and voted to move the application to staff approval with the condition of applicants selecting a window from the approved windows list since the proposed Windsor is not included on the list. Applicant have reached back out to staff stating that they would like to remain on the agenda and continue with the proposed window. Reasoning being the proposed window will match the Windsor window that was previously approved in June 2020 for the addition that was approved in March 2020. Under COA IV 2006-017, at that time, staff recommended that the applicant was advised to choose a unit from the approved windows list. Staff recommends approval of application IV 23-06-007 as submitted with annual clarifications to be submitted to HBO staff for review and approval prior to issuance of certificate with conditions for the new gable window to be selected from the approved windows list with final selection to be submitted to HBO staff and just in the selected thermal core door to have a smooth finish. Basis of staff rec is 3116.11, standard for alteration, number 19, 11, and 12. What do you got? Um, I didn't hear anything about the overhead door, but the reason that, that we wanted to stick with the Windsor window is that we, we did come back in 2020 specifically to change from a Marvin window to a Windsor window. And that was approved by the Italian Village Commission, and that's what's in the entire house. So we just wanted to be consistent with that. Could I ask you that there is no second floor of this garage, correct? Correct. The chances that that window will ever be operable. It's probably a, way to a fixed window. To it, where if the garage door opens, it blocks your access to the window, correct? Okay, so to me, this is just. Um, it's going to be a static, just sitting in the alley wall of the garage. Um, I agree. I'm in favor as it was approved previously on that addition, the same property. I agree. Okay. Uh, any further discussion? Hearing none, do I have a motion? Motion to approve. IV 2306, 158 second. Okay, yes, yes, yeah. Okay, do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? And motion carries. Thank, Thank you, sir. Thank you. All right, number three, which is 137 Cedar Alley, IV 23 03 001. You both raise your right hands and state your name for the record. Stan Lou. Matt Haberman. And you promise to tell the truth in your testimony about your ability this afternoon. Okay, great. Go to staff first. This is a continued application. This is for new construction and addition. Previous application was approved in 2006, but did not receive a COA due to final revised porch drawings not being submitted. Construct a new addition on the property include a patch of garage with bedroom above garage. Materials to include six inch wood simple drop siding, board and batten siding on the connection piece, windows to be gel blend wood windows, roofing to be GAF slate line shingle, trim to be wood, two wood floor panel doors, eight foot by eight foot sectional overhead door, Wayne Dalton. 
proposing to remove existing concrete porch and steps on west elevation, including existing concrete walk, remove existing concrete steps, patio and walk on south elevation, remove existing shed along the east property line, remove existing brick pavers, regrade and install new five inch concrete drive in front of garage, install new sidewalk and entry porch on west elevation, and new sidewalk to be reused existing pavers over permeable base. Addition garage design was approved in 2006, as stated previously. The following minutes from March 14th are included within the staff report. Um, applicant has submitted updated drawings to include board and batten siding on the hyphen, gooseneck leg fixtures over the garage door, and windows to be new wood replacement windows. At the June business meeting, the commissioner made the following comments and requests. Commissioners stated they were in support of the setback, but have concerns with the design of the connection piece. Commissioners recommended applicant adding a window onto the south elevation of the hyphen, as well as to add a shed roof over the south elevation door. Commissioners mentioned that the applicant may need to revise the board and batten pattern on the enclosed porch portion as viewed from the east elevation. Commissioners stated that it appeared addition second store windows north front elevation appear to be off center in the proposed drawing. The request the applicant confirm and revise drawings to indicate the windows will need to be centered on the addition. They do appreciate the siding design change with the board and batten on the connection piece as previously recommended. Revised drawings have been submitted to indicate submitted submitted to indicate a new window and shed roof on the south elevation. The applicant has also responded stating the window on the second floor north elevation will be centered on the facade. The back window will be a one over one window to match the existing design, and the back south shed roof over door will have open sides. Staff recommends approval of the application as submitted with any all clarifications to be submitted to HPO staff for review and approval prior to issuance of the certificate with conditions. Uh, the conditions being the windows on the south elevation to be one over one to match existing proposed. The addition second story set of windows to be centered on the north elevation. Gooseneck, gooseneck light specifications to be submitted to staff. Man door specifications, garage door specifications, and final exterior color selections. Final window selection that has been selected from the approved window list as well. Um, spaces is standards for new construction 31, 16, 12, and garages and now buildings pages 40 and 41. Excellent. Thank you very much. Do you have anything that you'd like to share with us? Uh, no, I mean, we've, we've tried to be as uh, accommodating as possible. Um, Stan, who owns the property, is going to be building the addition pretty flexible in terms of you know, minor finish alterations and things like that. Our main concern was to not alter the structure of anything um, so as to, you know, simply stick with the elevations and the aesthetics, um, you know, in creating the visual um, that's appropriate for the area. Um, so we hope that, you know, the alterations we've made satisfy the committee and um, we are able to move forward with the project. Okay, great. Thanks. Uh, one thing I do want to reiterate for the record is that we talked about this before. This is the extremely unusual location of this property where it is at the very end of a street that has been created as a dead end many decades ago by the uh, by the overpass that leads into downtown on third. Uh, so there's really not a lot of options for access to this site, which is why we've always supported having an addition that would have um, garage access off the front of the house. In addition, it's on an alley that does have a numerous numerous set of garages, including one right next door that has a bunch of uh, entrances right off of this alley. So just wanted to get that a record as to why we're going a little bit away from our usual housing design in this location. With that being said, uh, we'll go around and see the comments or our page where we have. Yeah, um, I guess I am in favor of this application and thanks for making all those uh, adjustments throughout because I think it has helped align with um, the appropriateness within the neighborhood. So appreciate you guys taking a look at that and revising for today's meeting because I think it'll help things go smoother. Okay. Good, Carla. So I wasn't here the last meetings, but I did look over um, the drawings and um, I think they, they seem quite nice. I have one tiny little request that you don't even have to do, but that it's a lovely alley. And I think one of the reasons that it is because there's so many trees, at least the ones, you know, the pictures that you could see around it. So I hope that in that little area, maybe towards back, you guys might add another tree. It's I'm definitely open to it, Stan. I'm sure Stan wouldn't mind another tree back in the alley by the highway. So, yes, I appreciate the input. Thank you. David. I have a question. It seems because these two pieces are of the same height, 
Am I reading correctly? This window, though, is bigger than these windows. That would be my recommendation that you should have the same size over here, which I think would raise this a little bit. But do you know that there's no dimensions on these? So we're working from rather untightly, but would you agree that they should look the same across the front? That's one. The other one is that we have been avoiding windows in garage doors. And I would recommend that you not have them there. Okay. And I can't tell what this door is, but it doesn't look like one that's on the standard. Which door was that, Krishna Khan? This appears to be the front elevation front door. It does appear to be a four panel. Um, we do have a four panel in the guidelines. I know for some property in an Italian village, there is the half plate that is uh, yeah. more recommended. Right. Um, Okay, well, I couldn't Thanks. tell from that, but this variation of the windows does not work. And I don't think it's appropriate if we try to get not look like an addition. Gotcha. So, um, uh, would you agree to modify the garage door to a different version for we have windows and adjust the window opening size to be more conformance with the existing house? Yes. Okay, it's good with you, Stan. And you can just do we that with that staff. part of the motion. Yeah, you can do those staff. You don't have to come back to see us. Okay. Sure, absolutely. I'll hold you up. Uh, I appreciate that. And I, I agree with those windows. I, I'll get with my architect about the exact size or reasoning for that. Um, but I agree that those should be more in line with each other. I know that Ben last time was pretty, you dropped it down just a little bit. I mean, honestly, just real quickly on the windows, I think the, probably the reason they did it was because the ones they put in are actually more in keeping with the typical houses in the neighborhood, which is that this house doesn't happen to have them. So I think they were trying to do the right thing. So, so. Okay. so on it across the Senate. It is the rear, so I yeah, that one's buried pretty far in this site that overpass over for me. I don't I just wonder if anybody good. else remembered that discussion at the meeting and wanted to call that up. If not, let it go. I'm not sure, David. Um I think it's an existing window on the original site. I'm not sure what it's no worries. I think that's existing, so um it might be that that's the way that it is in the Okay, um, um, before we continue, yeah. no worries at all. Um, we did just notice after your door comment, Commissioner Cooks, appreciate that. Uh, we did notice that it says two panel on the front elevation. Um, is that correct for that new design change for the door? I believe so. I know we had spoken previously um, on the notes on the door. Um, I think that was the single, single light over two panel, which is what I thought you had recommended without looking at the notes of the email. We do typically recommend that. That's typically like a three quarter light or half light. Yeah, okay. So it would be half light with the two panels underneath. Yeah. Um, so what I what we see here is not a typical design for the Italian village guidelines. The commissioner speak on it as well. Yeah, I mean I think you met this you met the the letter of the law, so to speak, but um, just without seeing it typically, it's just a more glass if you did glass. And or you don't have to do glass. We're open to those, you know, minor design changes. We'd be happy to make those notes and alterations with staff. Sounds good. Okay, with that, do I have a motion that includes the door and the windows? Um, is there anything else? In the garage. In the garage door, yeah. Three. Any other conditions as well from what we noted if the commission would like to add those in just what other ones do you recommend? Um I can find it sorry. <laughs> the only other conditions would be um you know the acoustic light specification. Sure. All those to be submitted to staff. Yeah, okay. Sounds good. Um would anybody care to make that, including whatever they are either staff requesting in their report? So I think the board it has the three issues that have come up tonight that the applicant has agreed to make those changes with more than staff on the motion. And then how are you bundling the rest of the or is that what you want? Yeah, that's not sure. So good. Yeah, are there is it can we say the set of things in your staff recommendation? Yeah. For us to call those out. Yeah, you can say based off staff recommendations, and we can go off that list as well. Commission was in agreement with us. 
Just a quick summary, four things. Tap recommendation, garage door, front door, and front windows, uh, front elevation. Got it. Okay. Do I have a second? Wonderful. Thank you. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Uh, and opposed? And abstentions. Okay, you're all set. Just work with staff to get the last of drawings finalized, and then you can move through the process. Okay. Best. 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 Or 20, uh, 281, 289, Detroit, IV-23-04-013D. All right, hello, sir. You raise your right hand, state your name for the record. Carrick Sherrill. And you promise to tell the truth in your testimony this afternoon. I certainly do. Excellent. Okay, staff. All right, another continued application. Um, <clears throat> This is for 281289 Detroit, changing to include the window style replacement and our IOCOA requesting approval as constructed uh, with the single divided light application onto it, um, landscaping plan, and the vertical bow with grain metal siding that is currently installed on both properties. The following is taken from the unapproved May 9, 2023 Village Commission meeting minutes. Um, it's subcommissioners peer review support finding solution. Um, I'm sorry. I got lost in my reading. <laughs> Minutes are included for this. If the commission would like me to cover any of that right now, or we can just go to a business meeting. Uh, let's get into the business meeting and yeah. no go back. Thank you. <laughs> At the June business meeting, commissioners requested the manufacturer's specifications for the unapproved vertical bow grain siding. With additional information to confirm that the product can be painted. They requested the revised elevation drawings to be included with the revised retaining wall to assist in the landscaping design of the building. If not able to provide before the hearing, they would recommend the applicant waiting until the July hearing to present when all information has been included. Applicant has been provided revised elevation has provided revised elevation drawings for the updated retaining wall, size, material, and rotation of the stairs, which has been submitted for subcommittee review. The applicant has not yet provided the additional information for the installation detail of the applied SDLs and the installed windows. Staff recommends approval of all of application IV 23-04013D as submitted with annual clarifications to be submitted to HBO staff review and approval with conditions. Conditions include installing the proper SDL stimulated Simulated divided light for the Pell and Pervia windows and to paint the inappropriate bow gray and metal siding with appropriate paint to match the color that is currently there to get the smooth finish for coding guidelines. Basis of staff correct is 31-16-04 certificate required, 31-16-12 standards for new construction, and 31-16-13 standards for site improvement. Okay, with all that, over to you, Kara, for your okay. thoughts. Uh, the only thing I have to add is uh, I've got the profile and installation method of the exterior applied SDLs from the Pello Rep this either late last week or early this week. Um, and I sent it over this morning. I know it's, um, it was late. Um, it's it's a profile that goes um, that's equal to the thickness of the glazing bead on the outside, um, and it's applied with 3M tape. Uh, there was also a photo of a building in Worthington that um, it was used. Uh, the same application was used on uh, that was uh, sent over to morning this morning. So, uh, okay. Um, all right, uh, thoughts, everybody. I have a question. Sure. Sorry, I was here last month. Mm -hmm. Um, working in this area. So, anyhow, um, we have this note on here remove concrete between property line and building face for entire front, um, entire frontage. Mm -hmm. Could you explain what that is? I'm sure this is something you guys talked about last year. Sure. Um, the, the contractor inadvertently poured the sidewalk that was um, from the back of the curb to the property line, poured it all the way to the face of the building, um, which resulted in most of the misunderstanding of what was going on. So okay. it's removing that and then and then installing the landscaping as um, as designed and discussed over the last several okay. weeks. So that becomes a uh, retaining wall that's become yes. a slanter. Yep. Okay. 
That makes sense. Thank you. Other questions for Boss Carolyn? I said um, one other thing I would, it just wanted to mention is, um, and this is a little bit picky, but there is a one of the feather reed grasses that are shown planted halfway over the wall. So I'm sure that that was just a mistake. Probably somebody put that there, not knowing the wall was there. But I think that just needs to be revised. Nothing that you would have to will hold you up. But I just wanted to point that out. Do you see that? If you look at the planting plan that says, well, they don't really say if it's a front or back of the house. Um, it's the other one. There or right there. It's up there. You see that? Oh, I got you. So you've got a plant that's. Um, Part of the way over there, and just from a design standpoint, I I think that the mix of plants that you have would be much better if they were simplified. Keep the taxes towards the center. Then, if you wanted to do either a continuous row of the boxwood or the grasses, but I wouldn't like mix those plants up. Um, there's only a couple places where that happens, and it's just a suggestion that I think it would look a lot better if those things were ordered more than the way they are. Does that make sense? Like, um, yeah, I mean, I I feel like they're um, generally as you describe. Um, I mean, they're they're grouped in in. Or in an order like that, rather than alternating. So, uh, well, that part is up to you. I was just uh, mentioning that that one sure. plant is happening. Yes, I, that. I see that. So that needs to be straightened out. Just move to the end or something like that. Okay, that's all I have. It, so let's go back to the window issue, which was a big one. Speaking of alternating, I don't know that we have any documentation of that, but having been in a building where the audience had been applied with tape to the window, it doesn't last in a break in this weather. I don't think that is a solution that is appropriate on this too. And the houses. I think this is a bigger issue than planning, to be honest with you, but uh, yeah. come back to this. And, so I'm not happy with that. I drove by today the project I got out. I looked at the metal, uh, the wood grain patterning. What was your research to find out? Can that be painted over? Does you do you lose your warranty on the product or whatever if you take over it? Um, I do. I do not have the actual manufacturer on that, but the owner has uh, discussed that with me and is willing to paint over it. So we'll, I mean, I'm, yeah, I I'm guess. sure there's a product that would adhere to it in some way. Remember, the product that's not wasn't the one that was approved. So this isn't our approval of the material. Start there. And again, unless we get some documentation that it can be painted over, I think we're setting up for a really bad situation. Yeah, I agree. So. I was hoping that tonight this, everything on this project would be resolved and we wouldn't have to bring it back forward, but I don't think we got it. Gotcha. Good. Did you? Yeah, I think for me, just the biggest question is if that, um, how that siding material will be treated and um, how it can stand time if it is painted or um, adjusted in that way. Um, but I agree with kind of the other comments regarding the um, windows. Um, I guess we want to make sure along with the siding, we just want to make sure things will stand over time. I think so that goes for kind of both those issues. Yeah, um, I'll speak to the landscape. I think you guys got to figure out, draw this time. I, guess I think we have the drawings. Um, the one thing that you may want to consider, which is more for your benefit, I think, than for my concern, is we had talked about when that landscape bed um, heads to the end of the property, which I guess the east, um, you just kind of have it dying out, I guess, you know, into the grade of the sidewalk. And that's fine if that's what you want to do. Just seems like you're going to have such a nice clean edge around the entire thing. And you're going to have to obviously 
you know, it's not going to be on the top of the sidewalk. I think it's going to be below grade to a certain amount in order to be, you know, have a, have a basis where it won't tip over. So you might want to just turn that corner and connect to the back of the, the garage um, because otherwise it's just going to kind of junk itself out into the into the concrete. Sure. Or the apron. So I, that was me. That's what I would do. Um, you're already doing all that work. It's like a tiny little piece on a giant project. So so I think the I think the grade actually up to the apron is uh, fairly significant. So I I don't know. I mean, I think that the. It, I'm just talking about cutting it back at the corner of the house. Um, okay. Basically, right at that on the bottom one and the one on the right. Yep. Yeah, I mean, just to essentially cut it back where it where it is instead of having it sort of just trail off into into no man's land. But okay, again, that's more of your concern. My concern was the actual edge of the sidewalk um, and preserving that for the, the the walkway and creating a green space in front of the building, which I think you have done. Um, the other thing I just want to note for the record, just because I know things have been getting constructed somewhat bizarrely on this project, um, there are wall height indications on here, which I think are very useful. Um, it says 19.4 inches for the highest part of that wall. I just want to note that because right next to it, there's still um, an arrow that says wall height that seems to point to the existing wall, which is going to be lower than that. So I just don't want there to be any confusion that this drawing meant that it was supposed to match the other wall height because it's definitely not supposed to match the indicated height and be on that datum, which it is now all across that one. Um, that one uh, foundation joint that goes all the way across, which I think is great. Um, so with that, I'm comfortable with moving ahead on the landscaping portion. Um, and uh, it sounds like there's additional concerns. What would the commissioners like to see as far as these other issues, uh, and spe you know, specifically the paint and the windows? I see that one of the notes, uh, Commissioner. Fergus uh, um, was concerned about the front door as well, so we continue to that. I don't believe so. I think the door was grouped into um, the changes that were made yeah, so after. For approval, I think those were grouped in with those mission of like at the time they still this application. Thank you, Trey. Here this evening, so that that's one choose. Oh, yeah, no, of course not. I think it would also be important when you come back to pan the, the metal the facing the wood grain. Uh, what, are, what is it going to be? What picture, where the color, or tell us what it's a business. It's going to be okay. It's not going to be pattern like what's up there now. Is that uh, with a submission of the manufacturer of the metal siding um, and whatever evidence that it can be painted or a uh, a method of painting that material in a solid color that is generally the same hue of the uh, material that's there, which would be the intent, cannot be staff approved. That works for me, I don't know, but others are thinking. Do we want any kind of um, like condition of upkeep if they weren't able to like prove the painting? Like they still want to go forward with the painting, but then the manufacturer just can't provide any like material behind that um, as far as lasting or how it would work. I wonder if then we could staff could also approve it if there's like a condition that it's I don't know if there's some kind of upkeep condition that it could be um refer to staff I think that actually had a false to code but yeah that would probably default to code that's what I was gonna say. Okay. There's not an upkeep of paying even of course code will okay. come around make no to that. <laughs> okay. And I'm okay with the staff approval. Awesome. Okay, that leaves us with the windows. What do we want? What's our approach to that? I understand the kind of concerns. I'm not sure what the solution is. I, I'm, I work in a building that has them. I guess they do require repair. I will say they last longer than I think they will, but they're certainly not permanent by any means. 
one of the things the commission was talking about all the front elevation is the one that we're of the greatest concern. Yes, the question is, were you considering them? Are you considering both sides of the map? So, it's it's the opinion, so that we have a full commission because there's been some strong voices from the ones that are not joining us this evening to attend. What do other folks think on the windows? What I've heard is that you, you provided uh, Morgan some information, but none of us have it. Yeah, we wouldn't have been able to include it today because it was the day of the meeting. For so, you, so. And been talking about this for a long time. Right. Uh, what, do, what do you think? Well, it, it's a little bit hard for me to say since I wasn't here, but it does sound like this is um, something that could end up being unsightly if it didn't work, and it's probably um, worth the time to get it figured out and to get something that will work for you a long time, and you know, then you won't have to deal with this in the future. So I think, you know, one more month of Getting this figured out makes some sense. Um, yeah, I think, I guess, since we don't have the, um, unfortunately, the materials of what you're specifying for those mullions, too, we're able to really look at those today. So, um, but I guess I'm not completely opposed, but we just need to see them. I guess. Yeah, I guess the other thing is, um, in, if there are other examples, like physical real world examples that we could go look at, that would be great. It's, you know, we go around town. Obviously, there's one at Worthington. If there are other ones that the same product, that'd be great. I, that was the only one that was represented to me that was remotely okay. local. Well, that's fine. Well, at least, you know, with that address, you let us know. I'm sure we can, yeah, you know, if we're in the area, certainly take a look. Yeah. I'm sure I will be. Okay, so um, do I have a motion on? Let's let's call let's stick with D for now. We'll get to E later. So for D, uh, do we have a motion that deals with the metal siding painting and the landscape plan? I'm here to make that motion for approval. I no, I don't want to approve those. I don't want him to bring in the and it be painted. Do they recommend it as a go? Oh, so you're not comfortable with that moving to staff. Um you're talking about yeah, those materials. That's I mean, if you don't want it to be, then that's okay too. Yeah, I can we can attempt. <laughs> that's okay. We could do a whole application tonight as well. See if I can split it again with up to the commission. Well, we'd like we'd certainly like to move forward with the landscaping. Yeah, let's let's yeah. get that off the table. <laughs> Let, let's do that one. Let's just start with that one for D. Okay. So do I have a motion for approval of the landscape plan as submitted with the possible modification of turning that uh, wall back into the, the facade at the eastern end of the building. And fewer plant varieties. Is that right? Well, I mean, I think it wouldn't be how I would do it. So, you know, I think there's a point where you have to say, is it worth saying, I wish you would do this versus what you did is okay. So I'm okay with what they did. I want to know. So the line good. cap and turn the curve. Yeah. So, so yeah. it won't go out is essential. That is essential. Okay, so we want to make that mandatory. Yes. The turn the corner. Okay. So the turn the corner is required then. And I think just use care in spacing the plants is would would be you know, an important thing. But I could make a motion to approve the landscape. Is that what we're looking for? That's it. That plan with that condition. With those. With those two conditions. Two conditions. Yes. Okay. You have that staff? Yes, I do. Okay. Uh, do I have a second? Second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion approved. Sure. And then are we referring the painting to staff or are we having to come back about it? So it needs to be a motion or we have to approve it. We either have to table it or we have to approve it for staff approval. So our our preference would be that if if we can provide evidence, the manufacturer allows the material to be painted and we can provide a paint that will adhere to it and show those two things to staff, then our preference would be to be able to get that done. That seems reasonable. Yeah. That would be. If, I mean, that seems to be the concern of the commission that the material wouldn't, wouldn't accept paint. Right. Yeah. Yeah. 
So which letter is that? E. e. Okay. Um, so a motion to approve IV 2304-013-E um, for uh, staff approval um, pending the manufacturer information on um, ability to paint the siding. And you want to include the color similar to what's there now? Um, yes. <laughs> All right, sounds good. Do I have a second on that one? I'm not going to vote. I will tell you, I will not vote for that. I think we need the documentation and this material. That uh, that's fine. All I'm asking is, is it open for staff to do that, or do they need to come in? They're I, going to come in on the on the window. I, I'm not disagreeing with you. All I'm saying is, we we both think it's fine if staff does that. I believe staff can do that. If you don't, then that's fine. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Okay. And if we're split in the vote, then maybe we continue the siding and the windows. Yeah, I mean, it's fine. I just don't think it's that contentious of a thing. Well, and right now, come in or we don't. Remember, right now, the effect is that wall over there, uh, it has a wood grain to it. Right. All of a sudden, you're going to put one solid color over that mass. Okay, time out. Are we changing? Let's, if we're talking about something totally different, then let's talk about that. Because otherwise, we're going to come back next month with a solution, and we're going to have to do this over again. I'm just trying to get through this thing after. 17 meetings. Are you saying that you are not in favor of them painting it a solid color that is similar to the color? I did now? not say that. Okay. I just don't know what it is, and I don't want it to be, okay. say, black. Well, right. I got gotcha. you. Yeah. I trust that staff will be able to tell if it's the same color. If you don't, that's fine. What I'm saying is, is it is the approach that we're recommending okay? To paint it a similar color than what it versus is versus putting up some other material. That, yes, but th then if if it's not okay, then let's talk about that. Because if if we so if it sounded like as a consensus we were getting to it was okay to paint. If we're not at that consensus, then yeah, that's absolutely table and we can continue yeah, to discuss it. That actually says the page will adhere to the web that we will stay. All right, I get that, but can I trust that staff can figure that out? That's all I'm saying. Um. Real quick, since we are talking about this, who is in favor, I guess, of maybe approving it at this time for the painting of the siding? I'm in favor of staff being able to manage that process. Yes. And Commissioner Kuklinski. Yeah. Okay, so you're cool. saying it now, but yeah. yeah. Commissioner Kuklinski, your yeah. approval. Commissioner, you guys review the manufacturer specification. Yeah. Commissioner, I mean, if you're not, that's okay. It's just trying to figure out. Yeah. Yeah. Agree. A little bit at a disadvantage, but I would say, um, if you feel that this is something that you can, that staff can do, then okay. But I just you would you would say it felt like, this, yeah. but you know this needed something beyond staff's involvement. Mm -hmm. right. Okay, I I think we would be okay. I mean, if you're still on the fence with Commissioner Cook, then you know our suggestion would be to continue with the windows just at this time. Um, the, if the, that's helpful, I'm just. The, <laughs> I think the important thing though is that we need to convey to the applicants so we can move forward. If we don't think this is an appropriate solution, because if that's the case, then they need to go and research something else. Or else they're going to come back with a solution to paint it. And then next month we're gonna be like, ah, actually, we don't care if you can paint it. We don't like that solution. And then this goes on and on perpetuity. So that's the question I'm asking. Like, do we think it's not appropriate? The painting solution doesn't Let's say they adheres to it. It's a similar color. We agree to the color. The stand, the, the manufacturer said it'll last. Even if they do that, it, is it still no good? Because it's not the uh, material we approved, which I accept. So if, and if you don't think it's appropriate, that's okay. I'm just trying to get to where we are in this discussion so we don't have to keep reiterating. And if the paint doesn't adhere to the Anything else like a stuccoy material that could textural material that could go over that existing material to offer the contrast to the other material that is offered there and it's not a challenge. My my take would be if we if we don't allow them to paint it, then they have to remove it and replace it with another material. And it could be the material that we already approved. Or it could be a different material they propose. So those would be the three solutions for me. Approved material, completely new material we don't know, or painted as has been described and suggested. Now that's just me. I don't know what your thoughts are. So what what are your thoughts on it? What was your preference? Um 
yeah, I think you listed kind of the three options there. Um, it's if the commission's okay with being there or not, and if not, it would be probably referred back to what was previously approved um, in the drawings. I just I just want to point out um, the original approved material is a fiber on wood composite material that is not wood that has a wood grain aesthetic to it. That's not typically something we would recommend or approve. Um, I just want to make, clarify that because yeah, fair point. So you're saying that's something that we typically wouldn't approve? Yes. So anything that's a faux wood grain that's not wood, <laughs> we would not approve the material. <laughs> so that's we need to keep it smooth. We right? don't use faux wood on new construction that didn't have wood grain. Somehow this one with wood yeah. grain ended up getting approved. So it did get approved. It did. Yeah. This is so complicated. <laughs> well, we've been going out for a long time. That's why I'm just trying to get as much of this through with us because I feel like really this is going to be a case that never ends. Otherwise, it's already kind of there. And every time it happens, it takes up a good chunk of our meeting. It does. You know, so. so, with that being so it's, it's incumbent upon us at this point to make some decision, is what I'm saying. So, if we're okay with this painting solution, then I think we move forward with the painting solution. If we're not, that's okay. But we need to tell them. Because not telling them is causing them and us different degrees of pain, but our pain is getting higher. Is there any way that we can ask that the product performs for a certain period of time? I think that's a very dangerous yeah. way to go about things. Yeah, we had to ask. Get approved. <laughs> I just yeah. had to ask. We've certainly done test cases on buildings and then referred back to future building proposals and said, hey, we tried it, it didn't work. But never said you have to, you know, over after a certain amount of time, have to remove it and replace it. So, what's our guidance to the applicant? Was I in favor of the painting? Painting. So, that would be the suggestion. Yeah. I'm in favor of the painting as long as it meets the stipulations. Whether or not that goes to staff, it comes back to us. I'm okay with that as a solution. If if staff wasn't certain, you could send it back to us. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm comfortable then if that was the case. Okay. If you start to see too many variables. Yeah. If it's something that we don't think would be a compatible fit with that signing itself and the finish, then yes, then we can bring it back mm -hmm. for discussion. Yeah, Carl, are you okay with the idea of the painted signing itself? I'm gonna say yes. Great. <laughs> Assuming that they're going to see these materials, right. yeah. look at the paint and the make and the manufacturers, and then come back to us if they don't feel comfortable with it. Okay. And we will, we, we can get all that. So now, David, if you still want to come back, that's fine. I just wanted to get to the point where we have at least a consensus of what we're telling them. So, is there another, would you like them to consider another approach? So there was a motion. I want to say something. Again. Say it. I... Well, there is a motion. Most of all, that built the way it was approved. We wouldn't be here. We wouldn't be doing all this. You're asking as like it's our problem. I feel as if you're saying it's our problem. Well, it is it... now because we've spent 32 hours reviewing it, and we, if we don't give them guidance, all we want to know is I went to that product. I went, looked at it again today, three trips over. Uh, I looked at it again. Probably it could be painted, but it also is so slippery. It's like a wood grain that sure. used to be on old cars. Yeah. Uh, and you think that's going to paint well and hold on it. And I think we're setting up for a real disaster unless the applicant can provide us a, a, a statement from the manufacturer. Yes, this product can be painted or yes, this will be durable. Gotcha. That's what I want. I don't care that you paint it or not. But uh, I want to know that going into it, they say it will say within a warranty or it will should that they'll stand by. Okay, so back to the first question. And, and that's that, that, that was the motion that was on the table. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. That the first question is, if that works, is are you okay with that? Yes. Okay. So that's the first thing. 
So that, that's what we got to establish. And then you're right. It is incumbent upon them to prove it. And if they can't prove it and it doesn't work, then we have another question. What I'm frustrated about in general is that we also have to give them any changes that we want or insist they go back to the original so that they don't keep coming back and iterating. That's all I'm saying because we've had a lot of iteration. And I'm not blaming us, but I am also sick of waiting, wasting our time. So it's like, you know, let's, let's kind of come to a consensus here. So it sounds like you wanted them to come back so you can see it, so you feel comfortable with it. I think it's okay. That's fine. So we're not, we're not advocating a new approach right now. We're advocating that you figure out a way to prove to us and the staff that that is painful and it works. Did it work? And you need me to bring that back. That can't be staff. David would prefer that you come and I will acquiesce to that. Right. Yeah. So we'll continue the signing in the windows until the next meeting. Yeah, now what else do we want on the windows other than what they've already provided? Not knowing what we it is. Seen it, so we don't know what I, I get you. So they're going to provide that. Is there anything, any other venue or direction that we could suggest that would be okay for us? Or is it just like a non-starter? If it's like a non-starter of these applications, then let's let them know. One of the commissioner with the proceeding feels that the fraud order should be replaced on okay. to what was approved. Yeah, well, I can't speak for anybody else, but I think we also have to decide on what's the front. You know, is it both the north elevation and, and the west elevation? Right. So. Okay, so it sounds so like. Let's look at what being done today, I guess. Uh, yeah. uh, yes, we're sitting. No, we did. It's just a tack on the window. I don't that's going to survive. All right. Well, yeah, one of one of the three things. So I guess if you did want maybe a, to get to a quicker answer, bringing in that option that was submitted today, and then being aware that it might be asked of you to replace Windows, kind of having a response or an option for that would be helpful, I guess, to move things forward. Move a bit forward. Mm -hmm. Good suggestion. Okay. So with that, uh, are you okay with us continuing that, or would you like us to vote on the the siding and windows can be continued? Yes. Okay. Sounds good. So do I have a motion, which I guess is E at this point to continue this? I move to continue to specific. Sounds good. Yeah. And do I have a, a second? Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. So those will be continued. Thanks, Nick. Okay. okay. We'll see you in this moment. All right. Well, trying to pick up the pace again here. We got another hour. Um, Eight fifty three summit IV dash twenty three dash oh five dash oh oh nine. We should put that one. Okay. Uh, will you please raise your right hand and state your name for the record? Tyler Tennyson. Can you promise to tell the truth in your testimony this afternoon? Yes, sir. Excellent. Thank you. Staff. All right. The first work description is removing the original aluminum siding that is currently installed over the original wood siding. Applicant was recently approved for an exploratory demo of section siding for section. Install new hardy plank lap siding and trim over the existing wood siding. Siding will be five and a quarter inch exposure smooth, one inch and eight inch smooth fiber cement base on breaks and eaves, five quarter. I apologize for one second. Um, Tyler, please correct me on these numbers because I have two on for the sizing, so I apologize about that. Um, five quarter inch by six inch smooth fiber smith freeze on tops of walls and rakes and eaves. Smooth solid fiber smith soffit on rakes and eaves. Five quarter inch and four inch smooth fiber smith outside corners. Five quarter inch and four inch smooth fiber smith and trim around perimeter of windows and entry doors. Siding to be painted iron gray. Property was originally approved for loom siding in 1983. Applicant initially reached out about siding replacement in March 2023. HBO staff informed the applicant that our standard review for non original siding removal and replacement is to be evaluated and determined if the original siding still exists underneath or has been removed. Applicant is then approved for exploratory demolition patch on the property. If original siding is still present, then staff will need to determine the condition. Applicant submitted the findings where staff found at the time that it was not sufficient. Um, the minutes from May 9th are involved, included in the staff report. Um, after the recommendation from the previous hearing, additional exploratory patches were approved and reviewed as scheduled in site on 518 2023. 
Staff noted the siding in some areas were previously damaged. There was 12 evidence of siding missing on the northwest corner, rear corner um, of the property. At the June business meeting, the commissioner stated request the following. Commission requested additional information about the trim detailing around the windows and doors. They additionally requested that the applicant to install the trim for the recommended sizing within the guidelines. And the commission would like to further review the updated color. After her applicant responded, stating that the exterior color has been selected to match the color that was previously approved for the 1077 North Fourth Avenue property as an example of color. Based on the additional site visit, staff recommends the commission approve application IV 2305. 009 with conditions for applicants to retain the original siding and to install the synthetic siding plus membrane of the original synthetic siding to be installed in the least damaging way possible to have the option of being removed for future restoration. Additionally, for the synthetic siding to match the current sizing profile and configuration on the property, i.e. for and batten on the west on the rear west elevation, and to install wood trim, windows, doors, corner board, frieze, and fascia. For the recommended sizing within the guidelines and city code. Basis of recommendation is 3116 standards for alteration. Okay, over to you. So I guess I'm just uh we're trying to be really accommodating with the, the trim sizes. So I'm really open to whatever you guys think is appropriate for that. Uh my contractor said they can make that work and I do have some updated numbers. I don't have the guidelines pulled up because I don't have my phone on me, but they're looking at uh, one inch by six inch fascia on the rakes and eaves, one inch by three inch uh, freeze at the tops of rakes and eaves, tops of walls, rakes and eaves. Um, and the three inch, I think, something. I don't know if that makes sense. That might be a typo, but. Um, one inch by five inch outside corner boards and one inch by four inch on the side casing trim, one inch by five inch on the top casing, bottom casing one inch, one inch by four and then a two inch sill around the perimeter. That makes sense. So at any rate, I think if, if you're willing to let us work with staff on the exact trim sizes, I think we'd be willing to do that. Yeah, Steph, what do you think about that? Um, I would be in agreement with that. Uh, sounds correct from what you're saying right now, but we can look at that a little bit more in detail. And then I think it makes, I think it says that, but I know during the business meeting, it was commented that we were going to do the same soffit style as North Fourth Street, but we're not going to do the aluminum. We're just going to do right for that. Okay, it's whatever. It was really the profile I was more concerned about. Oh, so no. It sounds like you guys have that resolved, Staff. So. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Okay, uh, thoughts, Paige? Yeah, um, I guess my comment was the one about the window trim. So I appreciate you guys looking into that and in different from the um, verticals from the sill and header. So I think, um, or I am comfortable moving that to staff approval. Um, and I am comfortable with the other items that staff listed as the last few months. Okay, Carla. Um, I could just ask the question if you go to image 13 and there are similar places where there is a lot of rock and maybe it's even stone, I couldn't tell. But you're planning on um, uh, radiating all of any mold and things to a point that this will all, it, it looks like mold, I can't say there's mold under there, but that all of that will be taken care of and yeah. you're going to make this a healthy place. For oh, yeah, of course, it's something we're planning on. Just drive around your corner. Take a look. Simple. Just did the video. All the different settings. Is it? Can I show it? Sure. Yeah. 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 I mean, this looks like the foundation of what a band board or soul plate or something that was on the top of it and then they were siding. So, so I can't say exactly what's going on there because we only bought the house in January. But to me, it looks like the siding doesn't, just doesn't come down far enough, or maybe some of it fell off. I mean, the person that owned this didn't take care of it at all. Yeah. Um, that's, that's why we can't nice. restore the siding. Yeah. And, uh, and that was another thing, too, is I just, I don't know if, it, if, it, if it's in good enough shape to, to not just remove it all. I'm not opposed to installing it on top, so if that's what you guys want, that's well, fine. 
I'm fine with staff guiding you on all of this, but I'm just bringing this up if no one has brought it up before that there does seem like that other piece of the EU where things are totally rotting away. I'm sure you're aware that things like this you just don't want to cover up. Right. That you're going to be repairing them before you put the site. Oh, I see what you're saying. So repair with wood. Or whatever. Is that what I guess I'm trying to understand. It's hard to tell just what that even is, but it does look like a rotting. Right there. Not the stone. If I may yeah. speak to that, that's on the back corner where there's uh, plywood. So I think that's a piece of plywood that has been extended down. Oh, maybe. Yeah. yeah. So from when I was there for the site visit, um, I think that's where that is and where that's deteriorating. Gotcha. Um, yeah. Someone probably did that like a long time ago. Yeah. So there's probably siding damage removed at some point. It's a piece of plywood potentially. So hopefully that helps clarify things. The only other comment I have to about the design is the board and batten on the back. I mean, it was approved with it all looking the same when they put the aluminum on. So I just didn't know if that was absolutely necessary to do two, two different kinds of siding. Was it consistent? Just because you got all aluminum siding, it doesn't mean you're right. And what we would always say is that any sort of addition, like preservation, historic guidelines, you do change the material, you change the width of the slats or going on short bat or something, but it wouldn't be finished the same as the original structure. And I think you're asking, can you finish it as the original structure was? I just, I would prefer to just have it all be lamp siding all the way around instead of having it be. But, but I mean, it's not. Are there guidelines on adding additions or doing things to the square buildings for changing the material? Oh, okay. Yeah, I mean, it's it's originally different material. I think that's the key because I mean, it's it's old addition, so it's kind of a little gray area. That being said, I think the fact that I hadn't worked back before is why we're interested in maintaining that variation. So right now, and then and we can work on that. Right now, the uh, the uh, sides all the way down are all that side, and the only board and bat is on the very back side. So are you wanting me to do oh, that? That begs the question, was that lap, is the lap siding the same lap siding of the rest of it, or is that a, a updated something when they ripped off the board and patent there? It's, it's just hard to say, yeah, just, you know? know, so I think we're going with what we can see, yeah. but it looks as if, as if you can't tell. Can we well, I guess there? to go further on that is, would, would you want me to just do board and batten on the backside of how it is, or would it be more appropriate to do board and batten on the entire edition that was done later? Yeah, it's either the entire edition or not. Okay. Thank you. Can you zoom in on that one? I'm sure I see what's going on on the side of that one right there. So, how do they do it? Actually, it's so hard to see. Uh, that board and batten looks a little you know, some people have funky too. I, I don't know. It's really hard for me. It's really hard to what was actually historically there, at what time. So I mean, I'm I think I'm pretty flexible on this because that condition has been there a long time too. I think we're going to settle 1891. The edition was built in 1891. The edition, I guess. Yeah, the building. Yeah, I think the building itself is older, and then the edition shows up in the 1891 sample. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. so, so at this point, a lot of things happened. <laughs> So I guess to go back to staff's recommendation, was it recommended to match that um, uh, board and batten and then the horizontal siding elsewhere, or did you guys have a suggestion? Yeah, we recommended just since we have the evidence of it being there presently, just to match what is existing now. So if there is clapboard on the side, you know, keep the clapboard on the side and board and batten. So just on the very back? Yes. From what we can see, I mean, um, but that's up to your commission, you know, we just base our, you know, recommendations off the evidence that we have. I guess the only question I have for staff is when they remove all of this, if there are elements that are just really seriously deteriorated, would that then lend it to having full removal for those portions for that wall? I'm just wondering if it's, I mean, it's really just, there's nothing there to preserve. Um, I guess, depending on, we can cross that boat and get there. From what we could see, you know, some of it was still in good shape and there were some portion missing on the rear. Uh, so we'd still want to recommend to maintain for future restoration. Um, but of course, if that's the case while we're moving, then maybe that's something you can contact with Tyler and we can. Yeah, I was just going to say, like, what does the process look like if we do one? Because we're not going to remove all of it until we get the material or at least most of the material because it'll look a lot worse than it does in 
surprisingly that's possible. But I mean, as long as we can just work with staff, that way I don't have to come back to another meeting. Because the whole issue is how long it takes this material to measure in. So I'd say definitely work with staff. Um, but I just if, if that's an issue, I think you know, I think we want to leave the door open to that. I require that they do the wrap on all parts if there are parts that you determine as staff are not feasible to be wrapped as such. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. So yeah, I don't know what that criteria is. So, well, I'll go with whatever staff is. I, I misspoke because I, I assumed that it would, because of, of our typical approach, that we would have board and batten around the whole of the addition, which would be typical if we were doing an addition, but if staff recommended just on the back, then it's fine with me. Yeah, just from way you have the evidence of it, it appears that there is some clapboard, from what I could see from this photo, on the side. And there was clapboard on the other side as well, as I just stated. So, we'd want to go with what is there currently. Um, but that is, of course, up to the commission for that material. Yeah, I mean, that works for me. Was everybody else thinking? Yeah, I think I'd be comfortable with um, that option as well as just the lap setting um, fully. Um, so you're saying just the back? Oh, she was saying board and bed. Way. I'm okay with just the back being board and batten or the whole thing being lap setting. I was going to say that I would be okay with the, the bad beast being more than bad. I mean, I would think that if they put an addition on like this, that it would probably would have all been the same material. But mm -hmm. I think that, you know, we don't know. So I'm okay with whatever staff thinks when they go out there and take a look at this and find evidence of other pieces. Easy to. Uh, Hard to play a couple of the rest of the house, which is spending more than keeping others that are in our village. And this, we are saying, is contributing. I would like to recommend that it not be painted black. Loco for a more historic color combination. Um, by the way, when are you going to finish the one on four? Oh, that's not mine. That's not yours. Okay. We just as other watching that. Just inspiration, yeah. yeah. Inspiration. But we don't want every little building black and I mm -hmm. it's, it's trendy, it's not historic. But this one of the comments said I don't have to have an actual big palette of historic color. So I got I just would have asked that there'd be got some consideration not to paint the whole thing black. I think if it's okay just for ease, we could just go ahead and do board and batten on that back side. I'm just okay. gonna have the rest and we're fine with that. Sounds good. Yeah, I don't think it affects the cost really that much. Okay, and you're okay with the other um circumstance of either covering it or not staff if you can show staff there are portions where it's material. I'm fine with just covering it all. If okay, that's, if that's easiest because it's gonna have a new moisture barrier, it's not gonna deteriorate anymore okay. than it has. So okay. I think it has my what is it holding trim and sales on the front of the cabinets. Yeah, that will be to staff's approval on the whole thing. So can we, can we talk about that a little sure. more? So specifically that back corner or the paper, it's really, we have an updated photo of that. It's really bad. So I, how do I properly take care of that while preserving the rest of the Does that make sense? Uh, I guess no. What are you asking? So the soffit. On the, on the right side of that photo. Oh, so if you know that close up photo of the soffit where it's very visibly open, it's on the back side. Right there. Yeah. So Commissioner Trot said I shouldn't just cover that up. Is that what I understood? Well, we, you're going to be working with a contractor and, and looking yeah. at this piece by piece. And I was just saying to you, if certain cases like this, I'm not a contractor, but I wouldn't think that you would just be coming in and covering it up. And yeah, we're, goes. I don't know if anybody's familiar with CJE restoration, and they've done a lot of other work in, in the village. They're the ones who are going to do it, and they'll do it professionally. That's why we're here. Yeah, I think that the issue is if there's, you know, obviously something has mold or rot to it, then you have to remediate it in some way. Or water damage, that's yeah. Weird. Oh, sure. We go yeah. over staff to, to get all that. So, if, yeah. All right, we do have to move on. We have a very hard time limit on the end of the meeting today. So, with that, do I have a motion for this one? I move that we uh, move 
Project 05 IV 23 05 09 to for staff approval. Um, that the back of the house will be board and batten unless uh, there is other evidence to the contrary, and the rest of the house will be left siding. Do any changes? Um, I think just that staff will approve the trim as appropriate to the neighborhood. Yeah. No. Okay, all in favor? Or a second? Do I have a second? Really quick, I'm sorry. What yeah. about the color? I mean, that's that's a suggestion. I don't think we have a, the authority, but that is a suggestion they would made. So, so staff can approve the color. Yeah, I mean, we have, of course, approved the, the darker colors in the past, you know, the thought of it being able to be painted again. Um, so, I mean, the commission can be fine with the color and go with approval with the color today um, or, or not, of course, you know. Um, I mean, I don't care. I think it was cool when I start, but I know you hate it. But I'm willing to say let the applicant work with it. So just a recommendation mm -hmm. this trendy Jillian of the Haynes or whatever magnolia is, if it's getting painted black, it's not appropriate for this little contributing cottage. And it's going to make it look even smaller to do it that dark. And they like what's done on Forest Street level, it's been done, you know, by the way. It's, we have looked into that, so okay. yes. <laughs> but no, thank you. Let's move this on. Yeah. I think we did talk about adding some trends to the windows and the door frames on the front, correct? Yes, yeah, that's what it's now for all of For all of them, yeah. That's the example you gave me, right? Beg your pardon? This is the, what you're talking about, the example yep. you took? Yep. Okay, so we have a motion and a second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? And abstentions. Okay, okay. thank you. Good. I do second that motion. All of Thank you. <laughs> All right. Moving on to um, da, 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 da. 60 HR High Street IV 23 05 012 BD. Will you both raise your right hand? State your name for the record. Yes, Matt Huddy, Colin Carter. And you promise to tell the truth in your uh, testimony this afternoon. Do. I do. Over to you, staff. I'm sorry, exterior alterations to the West Elevation High Street storefront, installation of new gooseneck light fixtures, installation of new wood and glass storefront, and operable and folding partition, nano wall at the table height, and tenant signage uh, to be determined is proposed to be supported by a new painted steel channel running the length of the West Elevation and 10 foot along the South Elevation. Uh, following unapproved uh, May 9th minutes, uh, meeting minutes are included. Uh, at the June business meeting, Commissioner made the following comments and requests. The commission asked applicant to clarify how the dumpster truck will be able to access the dumpster. The commission asked applicant to label the gray shaded area behind the dumpster on the provided site plan. They appear, um, the commission appeared to be in support of the corner entrance since it appears added into the space. Applicant has submitted updated drawings based on the commissioner's feedback and responded to the following questions. Dumpster truck carts if used would be wheeled out for truck access. Applicant has labeled the gray area indicated in the site plan as being the existing Pizzuti Joseph Hotel track and generator enclosure. Overall dimensions have been added to the outdoor patio space on the site plan. And current and past conversations with Parks and Rec have not led to an agreement. It is in hope of the applicant that the IBC would write a letter of support to the Parks Department to encourage them to consider allowing the use of the space for outdoor dining. Without this support, the outdoor dining um, may not be possible. Though the current storefront is not original to the existing openings, HPO staff does have concern with the changing the opening location and configuring, at, and configuring it as a corner entrance. Staff would also request further information on the penny mosaic tiles that are present in 2018 and if they are still existing. Staff recommends um, approval of application as submitted with any all clarifications to be submitted to HPO staff review and final approval with conditions for the entrance to be the central recessed entry or with the entrance facing High Street. Additionally, for the penny mosaic tiles to remain since they were a store of detail to the entry way of most commercial properties. Basis of staff recommendation is 3116 standards for alteration um, and architectural review commission guideline amendments adopted in 2005. Okay, thank you. All right. Um, well, really thanks for covering it. I think uh, we were here last month and had a great conversation and there were a couple suggestions that were made that we went back and studied and provided for you all, uh, namely, um, as is well documented, the corner entry. So. 
we provided that here in these renderings. Uh, personally, I think it works fairly well. Um, the other was the addition of a shoe mold on the storefront, uh, wood storefront. So that's, that's been added. And then we, uh, we provided the siting location of um, dumpster on a, on a separate adjacent parcel that is controlled by the, the property owner. Um, I will just respond briefly to the comments. I was unaware of the, the recent comments pertaining to the penny yeah. pile. It, it does not exist. It is not there. Okay. Uh, we just noticed it recently too. So we just wanted yeah, to. Yeah, I think that's that. certainly something we'd be open to exploring as a new finish to to provide as part of the build out. But um, just want to point out that it is it is not there. So Thank you. Uh, yeah, I, I'm happy to field any questions you have. Um, obviously, the the pocket park is one of those things that we'd love to would love to make happen, but. It doesn't appear that it's going to be in the cards without some uh, intervening act by someone other than us. So, what does that mean? What? <laughs> the park says you not let anybody use any of the space. Any of it. City, in yeah. Mass. Parks and Rec controls that entire space. Okay. Have we accepted the approach of writing a recommendation for? Um, we've supported other applications before. Um, I can't remember if we formally read the letter or not. So, well, while we're on that topic, uh, just the thing real quickly, um, there are two things, and I know these are conceptual renderings. Um, that being said, it, you know, I think our, at least my personal support was to, for you to take that out to where the edge of the current sidewalk is. And I know it's technically not an actual sidewalk. Um, these appear to go more into the park itself. Um, First of all, I don't think there's any chance that you're going to get beyond the edge of that sidewalk ever, ever, ever. It doesn't matter who writes you the letter. Um, so I would recommend not doing that. And yeah. then secondly, I'm just personally not in favor of you going into that brick area. I think there's a pretty, I think there's a very compelling argument to be made that the, the part portion that appears as the sidewalk would have been the front sidewalk of that building, you know, back before when this was an actual right away. And so that seems like a reasonable use. I think once you cross into the, the paver, the, the brick area, I think then that's a good argument that the parks could make to say, hey, this really feels more like public park space. So I think that's one thing is just to kind of pull that back if you choose to take that that route a little bit further. Yeah. I think I think at this point we are probably going to leave the park. No, that's I'm I, just saying you know, I, yeah. just just to note, and the other thing is that you do have a fire hydrant that you would have to start behind. Yeah. So I get you just kind of drew a big box. Um, that being said, it would have to start further back behind the fire hydrant and be pulled in enough so that right. you could do that. Image nine. I'm sorry because it has that fire hydrant. Yeah, I, I, I think the right way in that area is also too narrow to not go into the brick area. Um, yeah, you can see it right there. Yeah. Right. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of patios in Shore North that are. That narrower or narrower, so that's up to you, obviously, but certainly uh, it, there are a lot of them that are that wider or not as wide. But um, okay, so with that, uh, moving to the next one after this. Yeah, um, I think that uh, well, I guess last when we looked at this, we we're very much in favor of um, the adjustments you made from the last time you guys were in, um, and the. Uh, angled approach into the uh, building we thought was um, a helpful adjustment to also activate that um, pocket park. Uh, I mean, I think I would love to see if we could push forward with utilizing that space on the sidewalk if it is kind of what you was hinting at, like that odd pull of space or that like tighter, like bar standing area um, that could help activate that park. I think we've seen it sit there for quite a while, so it could uh, I'd be very much in favor of that was able to happen. Um, but uh, I don't have any additional comments um, from the um, building side itself. I think the storefront and everything was very appropriate to what we're used to see. I agree. I, I think um, you did a nice job on the storefront. Um, and I agree with the same comments about activating the park. I, I used to live in that area and I'd walk by it all the time and nobody was ever using it. And I know some people might have been involved with the design. But um, so I think that having an outdoor area that's actually to the side of a building and not like orange barrels on the high street would be a really nice thing. I could also see that if you guys 
needed to make it a little bit smaller to respond, you know, in the width away from the building to respond to what the parks wanted, um, that that might not be such a bad thing for you, if, you know, just to, to be able to have some outdoor, some badly needed outdoor seating. So I'm all in favor for that. The one thing I, when I look at um, what rendering is this, I'm not sure it's the same one, um, that I feel like it, people are going to fry during the summer out there. And I was curious if you are planning any kind of awnings, you know, trees that are going to take way too long to grow, like that lovely one that's in the front. But it seems like at least in some areas where people are going movable, you know, the umbrellas or something, but I just think I would mention that because um, it, I think it's something that you should consider. It's too bad that they won't work with you because I could see that could be a really nice immigration. Maybe it doesn't have to be totally slammed against the building. And, um, you know, the, there's a series of angles that those things could work. So have you contacted? Um, I, my understanding is you've been several rounds of conversations with the, part, the department. It's, yeah. it's not the, it's, uh, little cantina. You won. You're going well, to that's true. You're, out. you're going to lose the whole park. While yeah. restaurant food thing. It's not the, I mean, I think the, the one saving grace call it that we have to activate the park is that we, we did get last month the green partitions approved on that south side. So at least the restaurant will be able to activate the park from the inside of the space, which is better than what, what it is currently. The other thing I will say, I prefer if it was patio our outdoor dining space right away. That being said, it can be iterative too. We certainly have had a lot of restaurants. That have opened and had nano walls, and then come back later and asked for patio space. So, just because you can't do it today doesn't necessarily mean you can never do it. So, right. yeah, I'm it's nice to it. design it together, you know, to integrate yeah. the whole thing. But I don't know, but you just had no luck in terms of talking. Yeah, yeah. I, that is correct. Yes, move on. Yeah. Uh, well, what are your thoughts on the building? I have nothing to add. Okay, any other comments from anybody? Okay, do I have a motion? Um, let's see, I can do this. My glasses. I move to approve um, IV 23 05 012B. Uh, would you approve? Would you accept the amendment that um, we would support the outdoor dining if it was modified uh, to be to basically be on the sidewalk and behind the fire rider? Yes, and to comply with um, the city of Columbus parks. And that part. Um, and uh, anything else? Anybody else wants to add to that motion? Okay, we have a second. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Um, so um, it sounds like you'd be interested in us at least trying to have some influence there. So, yeah. Uh, so yeah. Um, if you wouldn't mind helping organize us to get a, just a real brief letter of support of some yeah. use of that sidewalk space, that would be great. I mean, even with the approval as is, we will have that comment that is the amendment of the commission being in support of the dining space as well. Right. So there could be something or an additional letter, but yeah, we can. Would be fantastic. All right. Thank you. Well, thank you. Yeah, thank you. All right. Next one is uh, new applications 31 East Russell. IV-23-06-006. They are not here and will not be able to attend this evening, so they asked if the commission could just continue their application into July. So if we just want to quickly Make go a motion. Ahead. Okay, do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Okay, that is tabled until next, or uh, continue until next month. Uh, now for numbers 8, 9, and 10, I will be abstaining. That's right. To our rules that allows us to still continue. Yes. Um, so I'm going to go out the hall, and then if we make it there before six, I'm happy to come back and do number one. So I'm not sure who's taking over. I'm not sure either. Uh, amongst yourselves, commissioners, if you would like to, since you know, Commissioner Burgess is not here. I'm not sure who has chaired or vice chaired before <laughs> in the past. <laughs> not. Commissioner Cook, would you? Sure. Okay. With seniority. 
Definitely. Okay, so we're on 285 East Fort. We're on 862 866 North High Street. So number eight. I'd be 230600. Okay. Andrew speaking. Uh, we'll swear you in. Please raise your right hand. State your name. Colin Carter. And uh, you can swear or justify everything to what you said. And I did as well. I do. Okay. All right. Staff. Mm -hmm. Sorry, oh my gosh, I'm getting close. Proposed work description install new storefront, side light, door, and transom with an existing opening on 1954 building to create a new vestibule entry door. Storefront B product FL200 aluminum, finished to be dark bronze to match existing windows. Install good, good gold vinyl address numbers to be looking on transom above door. Commercial building was constructed in 1954 with the building as a whole, seeing many modifications, modifications including the installation of doors, storefront windows, and existing openings, as well as modification of window openings for the 862 commercial space. The current fiberglass door was previously approved in 2017 to replace a non-original metal door. The June business meeting, commissioners made the following comments and requests. Commissioner requested applicant, requested applicant to submit a rendering of the proposed storefront. Um, applicants provide further information on how the storefront is to be installed within the existing masonry opening. Um, for applicant to set the storefront back about one to two inches from the elevation to provide relief. And they request the applicant to discuss the building and zoning if the proposed storefront entryway will be building code compliant. Applicants submit a request for rendering and respond to the commission's questions. The door will be installed to the masonry with tapcon screws and installed with a setback of one to two inches from the masonry opening. The interior is to be removed to provide proper clearance within the vestibule. Staff is in support of the new infill since the appearance matches the existing window design of the commercial building and of similar commercial buildings of the time period. Additionally, the design falls under the city code 3116.11, number nine, contemporary design for alteration to a property shall not be discouraged when such alterations does not destroy significant historical architectural or cultural material, and its design is compatible with the size, scale, color, material, and character of the property. Um, where's the rest of this? Sorry about that. Uh, staff recommends approval of the application as submitted with any all clarifications to be submitted to HPO staff for review and approval prior to issuance with, with conditions. The new storefront to be installed via mortar joints and the door opening of the original inset entry to remain if future occupant would like to return it to its original layout. Basis of recommendation is 3116 standards for alteration and that is all. I guess I have a question for you. Um, I think I heard some contradicting things. I think that um, there was response to the code compliance and um, in the plan, it said that, um, I think that the response said that those two wing walls would be removed um, on that, once you put that storefront door in. And then I think staff was recommending that it all be left the same in case that door does want to be pushed back. So I guess, are you, Planning to remove the wing walls in that vestibule area. You're talking about the interior masonry wing walls. Yeah. Okay. That are currently uh, exterior. Yes. So we were not anticipating removing those wing walls. There is an interior door set back that that would be removed to provide that accessibility and um, gotcha. accessibility in that vestibule. Okay. Um, yeah. I guess. Uh, well, I don't know where it stands, but as far as like. Um, that small of a vestibule if that will be accepted by um, building code compliance. But um, I think it's good to hear that those wing walls won't be removed, but I guess that is just a concern if that will be approved in the future of having that small of a vestibule with the door swing opening in. Um, yeah. And then I think you also responded about um, having that storefront set back a little bit. So you see that brick edge there. Yeah, yeah. so that will set back an inch or two. Yeah. It's based on exactly that, you know, yeah. adjusting the field. Yeah. Um, and I think that's all that I was going to say. I agree with staff about um, recommending approval because I'm not sure where we stand as far as like code compliance issues go again. Yeah. So, yeah, recommend approval. 
Did you have any thoughts about how tight that is for? Oh, um, I do. I uh, I took some photos, so uh, if you give me one minute, I should be able to pull those up and give you some measurements here. Or if you'd like, I, I can follow up um, if that's easier. I guess just a general question. Um, I, that's 60 by I think 48 inches. This is your minimum code compliance and we exceed that. Oh, okay. All right. And there are stairs to go up into the second floor. So um, there's plenty of space. Okay. Yep. Pretty good. Yeah. Any comments? Yep, I think it looks fine. Okay. Would someone make a motion to approve? Yeah, sure. Um, motion to approve 08 IV 23 Um, there's no conditions, right? But it's just staff's recommendations. Yeah. I mean, ours is just mostly to be a mortar joint and not into the masonry itself or yeah. what installing. That'd be ours. <laughs> Thank you. So you're going to second it? Yes, I second it. Motion to approve. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Now we go to one two. Now we'll just stay here. I <laughs> think <laughs> it works out. This is IV 2306010, 285 East 4th Avenue for Bethany Church. Um, application is in response to a code violation, installation of two glass sconce light on either side of the double entry door, addition of the festoon lighting over entry egress well, wells on east and west elevation, addition of steel fence post risers to accommodate the addition of festoon lighting, risers to match detail of previously approved fence design, addition of guardrail on the tower, which was required by Columbus Building and Zoning Services, guardrail to be black steel. At the June business meeting, commissioners made the following comments and requests. Commissioners had more to discuss about the installed sconces. Commission stated that the sconce may look more appropriate lower. They requested applicant to provide comments provided by VZS about the railing piece, as well as the reasoning for the railing to be installed. Additionally, if the horizontal design is required by VZS or design choice by the applicant. HPO staff mentioned to commissioners that they requested applicant to provide the elevation drawing to show the railing in the tower, manufacturer specifications of the railing, provide the VZS comments. Commissioner stated that they would be in support of the additional bistro lights and post. Staff recommends to continue the application until applicant supplies materials that were requested by the commission at the June business meeting. Basis of staff record is 311611, status for alteration. And that's okay. So in the issue of that time, really going to have to really hold the conversation since it is recommendation that we continue this, if that's acceptable. Um, we're here for the meeting. We thought these lights on either side of the historic building are way too contemporary, too new, don't look uh, synaptical or something, but there's a far better solution than those lights. Um, those are quick comments. Anything that you wanted to bring up or highlight today, or can we get a motion to continue? Just one quick question. Was there an issue with the placement of the railing, the handrail? Um, that was in reference to the It's not bad. It's okay. at the top yeah. of the tower. Okay. Thanks. <clears throat> then no, I would move that we continue this. Continue IV-23-06-010. Um, with a um, the, the applicant would bring back lights that are more historic in character and in keeping with the church. In the you sorry. Go ahead. I think yes. just staff was ask, asking for the railing information of what was required and why it was required. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, both well, the elevation showing to be railing um, being installed. So, are you asking for an elevation that shows the railing? So that this that was required by the city inspector. Yes. Based on you know access up there for mechanical purposes okay. and that parapet being too shallow. Um, so a railing had to be installed and that railing was to more kind of mirror that um, existing uh, louver that, that that we kept on historic um, so that that was the design uh, inspiration for the horizontal railing and then the requirement for uh, 
for access up there in the city. So. We made the motion. Create a second. Okay, all those in favor of continuing? Aye. Those opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Sorry. Suggestion on the light fixture. You might want to look at like uh, one of the, the recycling uh, people that have architectural details, windows, and frames and things of lighting. Something that was on a church, maybe in another location, but something that okay. doesn't look like it came out of Lowe's. Yeah, that, that's fair. The, we would say that there's basis for that design throughout IBC, um, understanding that this is a historic church. So I, I totally understand and respect your perspective on that. Um, yeah, there's consistent design throughout. Yeah. The fact that you went ahead and did it without cutting to it. So, yeah, sorry, but no. But um, perhaps some other options. Okay. All right. Our next one will just want the elevation drawing so we can see the height overall, where it is positioned in depth on the tower as well for the commission to be able to see. And just the letter from BDS, you know, stating why that was installed there, what the purposes will be for, for that is well, what I gathered from the commissioners. But um, we can move on to number 10. This is 1068 North 6th Street, Bethany Flats. IV 236011. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Are you still yourself? Okay, I'm checking. <laughs> Sorry about that. Yeah. Is Jason back in? Is this? Oh, yes. We need Jason. Where's he? No, he's still recused from this one as well. It's still the same. Yeah, I, this is going to get bad because I, I have to leave at six o'clock or before six o'clock. So. Yeah. Um, if, yeah, if we do not get through this application at this time with a definitive motion, because I'm sure Cook will have to be leaving, we will lose quorum. Um, there's a potential of moving the um, having a special meeting for the last two applications on the agenda um, or possibly our next business meeting. But let's hope that we can get through this uh, news of the ending ending of the meeting uh, came today of having to end at six. Um, so if we do not inform at that time, we cannot continue for this evening. And thank you for the reminder, David. I didn't realize it was 540, so I appreciate it. Um, so let's uh, talk about 1068 North Sixth Street. Uh, let's swear in the new the new member on the team. Let me quick. Okay. <laughs> Please state your name. Dave Perry. And we know you are you're already in. Yep. And also everything you'll say tonight will be to the Absolutely. Group. Thank you. Okay. okay. Sorry for the short episode. No, you're totally fine. Um, I'll get through this as quick as I can. So this is variances for area A and B. Um, I'll read these as what the other people say 332209 residential district permit 40 dwelling unit apartment building for our district while part of area A zone RA AR2 332121 81 landscaping screening to reduce interior parking lot trees from five to zero to reduce the four foot landscape setback along part of the east property line from four feet to zero and to eliminate screening along the east side of the south 90 feet driveway from Detroit Avenue 28 feet alley. 331219 fronting to permit dwelling units from front to Detroit Avenue, 28 feet. 332221D building lines reduce North 6th Street building setback line to 10 feet to 4 feet. And 332285 perimeter yards reduce the east and west perimeter yards of the 10 dwelling unit building to area A from 10 feet to 6, 40 feet and 6 feet, respectfully, and to reduce the west perimeter yard to zero feet for parking. And to reduce the east and south perimeter yard for 40, unit, 40 dwelling units. And this is an updated variance. 3312-13 driveway to reduce the width of the south 90 feet of driveway from Detroit Avenue, 28 feet alley from 20 feet to 14 feet, which is updated as well. Area B, 3333025, AR2 apartments, residential districts used to prevent an apartment house, seven dwelling unit and single unit dwelling on lot. Dumpster area is 332101, requires the dumpster not to be located in the required yard. The proposed dumpster for area A and B is proposed in east side yard, zero feet as shown on the site plan. 33, 33, 18 building lines requires building lines of no less than 10 feet along North 6th Street with the applicant proposed the existing building setback of 7 feet. 33, 12, 13 B driveway to reduce the width of the driveway from East 4th Avenue, 20 feet to 13 feet updated. 33, 2105 vision clearance to reduce the 30 feet by 30 feet clearance um, to 10 feet by 10 feet, which is updated as well. 
3333 uh, billing lines requires billing lines for no less than 10 feet along North 6th Street and East 4th Street, or the applicant proposes the existing billing line setback of seven feet along North 6th Street and five feet along North or East 4th, Ave 4th Street updated. Maximum side guard required to reduce side yard from 15.2 feet to seven feet due to dumpster. On the east side, 33-33-23, minimum side guard permitted to reduce the east side guard from 5 feet to 0 feet for proposed transformer and dumpster. 33-33-24, rear guard to reduce rear guard from 25% to 16% for the primary seven dwelling units. Site development and building design is previously approved um, with the application or application numbers there. Landscaping application was approved in January 2023 under 295 East 4th Avenue with the condition of four horn beams to be replaced with four shade trees to add additional shade landscaping to the parking area. At the June business meeting, commissioners made the following comments and requests. Commissioners requested applicants provide additional information for the tree variance under area A, as well as clarification of the dumpster variance. Applicant responded stating the trees were added to the perimeter of the parking lot, but internal to the parking lot but not internal to the parking lot. For the dumpster, it is compliance other than the zoning code treats. A dumpster as a structure, given its location is in the east side yard of five feet of area B next to parking on area A. The applicant has also submitted updated and revised uh, variances for both area A and B. Staff recommends approval of the application as submitted with annual clarifications to HBO staff review and approval with conditions. The applicant retained previously approved trees and does not remove additional tree and landscape from the site plan. Basis for staff practice 311613 standards for site improvement. Thank you. So whenever these are variances, so could you say other than this? Well, I'm going to do okay. Go ahead and speak with your reason. Okay. Do you, do you want a general explanation or me to go through how all these variances apply? General would be fine. Mm -hmm. cool. Well, I just want to clarify we take action on things that were within the guidelines, the recommendation, we made a recommendation to the city to change the variance. We were not in a position to respond, correct? Yes, we can make recommendations. We'll make recommendations for these variances for them to go to city council. If we do have maybe a concern on the with the design, with the relation of the variance, that we can discuss that. At the yeah, because we approved uh, plans previously. Yes. And now you're coming back and asking for some variances to the our approved plans. Yeah. That's where we are. I wasn't here last month. So okay. um, I, I have to say, I have some concerns about the things that you're asking for. So, and I don't see this as being a 10 minute um, kind of conversation. I think it's something that, you know, I don't want to like say no blanket. I think these are things that need to be gone through one by one. Some of them I think are an issue and some of them I don't, but taking a building step back from 10 feet to four feet. That's that I'm not really sure how something like that even works when, you know, we're looking at landscaping and other things in front of the buildings and then essentially taking, you know, the trees out of the parking lot. You know, because there's still other ways to work with that that um, we had talked about before that aren't considered. So I think these are things that are that I would not feel at all comfortable um, recommending. Okay, um, I'll just... that, that's just two of them. But yeah, I understand. I will. Uh, I'll just say briefly then that the. Uh, This is a site plan that I wrote the variances off of, and this has this application has uh, multiple, as you can tell from the citations, technical uh, technical issues to conform the project to the zoning code. Um, but my understanding is that the, the commission has has approved the site plan and architecture, and I, th I think the landscaping. And so that the zoning application is coming along and these these items make this site plan comply with the code. Uh, I don't think you'll find that this the citations are any different than what uh, the, the citations represent zoning code compliance with what has already been approved is my understanding the site plan that's already been approved. Okay. 
So you're saying that what we approved before was more than what the code asked for, and now you've taken the, it. You're pushing the code to the the limit of, of you're taking. You're making revisions to the limit of the code. It, like um, for instance, well, no, says, um, I, I'm not revising anything. Um, I mean, I was I'm on board with the Likens team to to handle the zoning application to that will get them to a site compliance plan and building permit. But the but the the site plan, this site plan, and the, what I understand the commission has approved requires zoning variances. And that's that's the citations that I've done. So, so as I said before, I don't think this is, we only have now seven minutes. Yes. I don't think this is a seven minute conversation. Um, there's three of us. I'm like I said, I'm not okay with some of the yeah. proposed um, changes that you're asking for. So I don't know where we go from here. So do we want to continue? Yeah. Yes, yeah. but yeah, unfortunately, with the timing and um, with losing quorum at six, I would we would recommend just continuing uh, the application um, until next month. I mean, of course. Um, Due to the time that we're losing, we could also add your application to the special meeting. Could be heard sooner yeah. um, since we are losing forum at about six p.m. this evening. Yeah, sure. Yeah. So, I I don't know if you need volunteers to be a part of the special meeting or how that works, but that will be um, it. Will be a time that we'll schedule with all commissioners okay. to be present. So that'll either be between now and the business meeting, or depending on the schedule, it might just have to be. Um, at the beginning of the business meeting, which we've done in the past. Um, so that's how we would schedule a special meeting to review the last applications on the agenda. So, picking up where we're yeah, so picking, yeah. So you would like a motion now to continue? Um, that's that's a sticky wicket because if we motion to continue, that's continuing it into next month and not leaving it as for the special okay. meeting. Yes. A motion to address the Senate. Yes. If scheduling allows otherwise that it's understood as the first thing on the business agenda. Yes, we could we could do something along those lines, but um, for the sake of time, and since we don't have all the commissioners here, um, we can just also um, possibly during this evening at this time, um, we're at six, and then move on to the special meeting with the two final applications to be reviewed. We'll make a motion. That's, I mean, with you having to leave at six. Okay. Is there a second? All in favor? Aye. Meeting adjourned. We look forward to it. Very good. the next meeting. I wonder if it was the last. Yes. If no. Um, we So, I know this only tonight, so I found out. Yes, yeah. 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 the bylaw being passed for recently, we are going to be able to do the or only version of the idea now we apologize about. So, so, yeah. so as I want to say, I think it's great. So, we've used Chris and Jack B. Zoning is called. And the last room that we would say that the groups that this is So, yeah. last resort would be two weeks from now. But we are going to try our best to organize the schedule with the cashier to get it.